In this lecture, I'm going to discuss the effect of the water table on bearing capacity. Now, before we dive in, uh, do note that there are multiple ways to do this. Um, all of us, or all of the, the methods will arrive at a similar conclusion, and that conclusion is that the effect of the water table within a certain distance of the footing depth is going to reduce our bearing capacity. So, what about the water table? If the water table is present uh, in three conditions that I'll describe, it should be considered. And I'm, I'm going to use Trezaghi's bearing capacity equation, which is uh, more simple than the Meyerhoff equation from before, to help explain this. Uh, don't worry too much about the specific equation for now. The main concept is that we have our three major terms for cohesion, uh, for surcharge or our overburden, and for the footing or footing dimensions. And in this case, we'll let our cohesion term go to zero for an easier explanation. Um, and because that is the assumption we're making for most of our soils. So our first option I want to explore is when the water table is above the foundation, above the bottom of foundation. This is the worst case scenario. And uh, in this case, two terms must be modified. A portion of the unit weight term, gamma, has to be taken as the effective unit weight which is the saturated unit weight minus the unit weight of water. Um, think that the water is creating some buoyant pressure on the soil, reducing its weight in its consolidation. And next, the surcharge term, Q, is going to be a combination of the dry soil um, above the, about the foundation depth and the saturated soil. So normally our surcharge term Q is just going to be gamma or unit weight of the soil times the depth of the foundation. It's just the weight of the soil above where the foundation is bearing. But in this case, we have our Q prime term um, that I've calculated based on uh, the depth of the footing, DF, and the depth of the water table, DW. And note how those will plug back into the major equation here in um, the gamma term on the right and the Q term in the middle. In order to alter our, um, in order to alter our bearing capacity. The next and most complex option is when the water table is below the foundation, but less than the width of the foundation from the bottom of foundation, or, or what I have described as DF plus one point five B. In this case, the water table only affects the footing capacity term modifying it based on how far the water table is below the footing. We can use this uh, CW term that I've defined to represent how gamma is modified. Uh, interpolating between the values of 0 0.5 and 1.0 based on the depth of the water table in relation to the footing depth and width. Remember, it only affects this gamma term, um, this gamma term here whereas uh, our Q term will stay as gamma DF because that is just looking up to the, the um, location where the footing is actually interfacing with the soil. But in this case, uh, our final term all the way on the right, this 0.5 gamma B and gamma term is, is referencing this chunk of soil and the capacity below that interface. So we have our um, gamma is going to be some gamma prime modified by a CW, which is really just an interpolation between 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 1 based on how far that water table depth is below the, um, below the footing. You notice as you get further and further away, uh, that CW term gets closer to 1, which would give us our, um, you know, result in our normal equation that we started with, which brings me to option 3 when the water table is sufficiently below the foundation, um, we disregard the effects of the water table and use the equation as normal. 